All right, we are ready to complete cases three and four of partial fractions. We already discussed a uh, partial fraction case one and two. And basically what we, what we have for today, let's say, see, there we go, that uh, we want to integrate something like it looks like this, where we have two polynomials. And, uh, and the question is, we're going to refresh a little bit our understanding of partial fraction. And the important thing here is that, obviously, the order of qx have to be less than the order of px. If that's the case, then we have a true fraction here that we can work. This is the first part. The second part in this is that px need to be uh, factorized. Can we factorize px? And that's the big question. Depending on how we factorize px, then we're going to have the, f the four cases. Basically, that's what everything boils down to, is to identify that denominator. And, uh, <coughs> for example, for case one, it was easy to demonstrate that if I can factorize px as within linear factor, such as something like this, let's say uh, px is a plus, uh, sorry, let me fix this. Uh, x plus minus a letter, a constant here, and then we keep factorizing uh, in li with linear factors, b, etc. Then on case one, basically when we go back to this integral and we simplify it using partial fraction, this fall into what is known as case one, which will be x plus minus a constant plus big B over X plus minus, uh, in this case, B, and so forth. So that's basically it. That's case one. Case one is very simple. It means that you can factorize PX, this polynomial, in this, uh, you can break it in single factors. Now, for case two, uh, for case two, the idea is, Obviously, the first thing applied, the one apply. Now, for the second, Px, uh, for case two, it means that Px, somehow, they're one of the linear term is repeated. So, in other words, uh, I have something like this, in where this is elevated to a, a given power above one. Uh, for the sake of the argument, let's write the two here, just to make things easier for understand for the understanding so that means that if the, we are in case two our fraction will look more like this will be like for example uh, a over x plus minus a but then we have to add and be sure that we understand that this part is b over the first linear factor plus a c but this one square. So you can imagine that if instead of two, I have a three, they keep going, keep going, and so forth. So that's case two. Case one and case two, we have a video about them. You can revise them. Now, if you have any doubt, uh, now let's work on case three. Case three basically comes from the fact that when you take a look to that denominator, you cannot factorize any longer. Like, for example, that happened when you have something like this. Let's say that I have x squared, oh, sorry for that, oops, that I have x squared plus 5, something like this. If that's on my denominator, then I know that this cannot be factorized anymore. That's the end of it. Let's say that I have now, another one here, like for example, x2 uh, plus 3. If I, ha if I have that type of polynomial on my denominator, uh, definitely this is obviously going to be case 3. Case 3 meaning that you cannot any longer factorize this type of, uh, of factors 
just because of the fact is that when you have when you try like for example s squared plus phi equals zero let's say that i'm trying to find the roots there's going to be a problem because you're going to have a negative phi there and when you try to get the square root then you are dealing with imaginary numbers so this avenue tell is, is going to tell you that yes you cannot factorize any longer so you are right there within case three meaning that when i break down in partial fraction my integral is going to be looks like this now this is a uh, square so i have to use an auxiliary that looks more like this see and then for the next part since this is also falls within that case three concept then I will have this is a B so I keep going CX plus D over X squared plus 3 now if I have another term here and depending on what term it is I either I can apply case 1 case 2 or case in this case case 3 because this is the way it is like for example uh, and let's let's do a, a case 3 but kind of combine let's do a case 3 combine let's say that case 3 looks more like when you break px looks more uh, like this x squared plus 5 but then you have an x plus 4 just to say the least if that's the case of your uh, of, uh, of your polynomial px then the break of that polynomial in partial fraction will be like for example this first part will definitely need to be a x plus b over x squared plus phi but now the next one is a linear factor that means you you use the a you use the b so that will be the c over x plus four see it end up being kind of a combination between uh case one and case three careful with that now what's case four case four so that we get the whole thing together case four is when uh px which is the denominator is somehow obviously like this i'm using a true example but uh sometime it is elevated like for example let's use the this, this example here uh x2 plus 3 but you see these are to the power of 1 but if any of them is repeated let's say that this is 2 then you are what is called case 4 but case four it basically is like case two, right? Because then when you break the whole thing, qx over px, then you will have, like for, ex for the first factor, you will have ax plus b over x squared plus phi. Now, when you go to the next factor, then you will have, since, it's, since you cannot reduce it any longer, so that end up being cx plus d over x squared plus three, now since this square remember this is look more like case two in that sense you keep adding another term that will be we end up by d e x plus f over x squared plus three and that has to be square see so basically case three and case four sometimes they need to use what we already define on case one and case two the important thing here is that if the de denominator cannot be factorized anymore then you are definitely you need to take care of that kind of a situation with case four that's basically what this is all about these are the four cases let's do let's do an example a nice example so that we put everything together and uh and we have a good idea about how can we work this out let's do a very fancy one kind of hard i would say uh let's see let's open a window here and let's say that i'm gonna work on something that looks like integral because we are working on integral we are not doing partial fraction because we want to do partial fraction we are doing partial fraction because that's a technique that we can use to simplify our integrals so that they look better and easier to work with like for example 10 uh, x to the cube minus 5 over x squared plus 5 seems like an example here right uh, but let's say that this is to the square and all this dx all right now when you 
take a look at that, the first thing that you want to, uh, you know, be sure that this comply with the concept of partial fraction, that the order of the denominator uh, has to be higher than the order of the numerator. In this case, the order of the, of the denominator is 4, order 4, and the order of the numerator is order 3. So this is, this is okay. This is right. So in other words, in this case, uh, Qx, the order of Qx is less than the order of Px. Perfect. That's a check mark. Now, the next part is what case? Ah, uh, what case? Uh, check the denominator. The denominator cannot be, uh, you know, you cannot get the root out of this, so you cannot further subdivide or factorize this factor already here. So then definitely see either case 3 or case 4. Now, case 3 will be if this, instead of having a 2 here, is a 1, right? But uh, it's repeated. So this is definitely case 4. It's a type of, you know, so when you break this out, then you have your 10x to the cube minus 5 over your x squared plus 5 to the square has to be breaked in at least ax plus b over x squared plus 5, first term. And now I have another term, which will be uh, abcx plus d over a squared plus five squared. As I said, this is case four. No problem with that. Easy up to there. Now, what's next? Well, next is find, you need to find what is A, B, C, and D. And remember, when we find those values, we are not doing partial fraction alone. We are doing integration. So we need to integrate this, integrate this, integrate this, and we find it, finally find the, uh, we can find the result. Now, to get that done, uh, let's <coughs> excuse me. Let's multiply by the denominator across. If we multiply by the denominator all together, so we end up with 10x to the cubes minus 5 equal ax plus b. Now, we I multiply by this one of the cancel out, so I got s squared plus 5 plus. When I multiply this by this, the whole thing cancel out, and I get cx plus d. Right? No, no, no big deal. Now, uh, one trick that you can definitely apply here is, like, for example, there's things that are to the cube uh, or that are to the square and so forth. So let's simplify the right-hand side a little bit more. And let's get the math here. So that would be 8 to the x to the cube, and that would be plus 5 ax, uh, this time this, and now I have plus bx squared time uh, b5 of 5b plus cx plus d. So as we do in case uh, in cases uh, 1 and 2, we need to find out what are the letters, what are a, b, and c, and d in this case. Uh, so the, here's the trick, the trick, sorry for that. Here's the trick. Check what is x to the cube. We find that there's only one variable here, x to the cube. That by itself is saying that, for example, if I check x to the cube, uh, here I have a 10, 10 has to be a. There's nothing else. So in other words, here, a equals 10. That's it. That's, for, that's as simple as it can get. All right, now let's do a balance on x2. What we have here, nothing. So that's 0 equal whatever is e here to the, to the cube. So that means b is the only thing that is to the cube, I mean to the cube, to the square, uh, bx squared. So only, so that means here, obviously, that b has to be 0 in order for this side to be equal to this side. So uh, we are rolling along. Let's about x. That uh, check on x uh, in this side, in the, in the left-hand side, 0 has to be uh, whatever have the x. Oh, here is a 5a. What else has the x? Uh, C, 5a plus c, nothing else. That means, since I already know the a, a is 10, that means 50 plus c equals 0, meaning that c equals minus 50. Excellent. Now, how about the d? When I check the d, let's say the d. The d is, 
uh, minus the only constant here on this side, right? That would be x to the zero, uh, is minus phi. That means that <laughs> very simple, right? D equal minus phi. That's it. So I got all the constant that I need on this problem. So now let's get the let's get the whole the partial fraction that looks good. So let me copy some things here that make life easier. So I'm right here. Let me copy all this. Let me put it somewhere here. And now let's start to substitute some of the values that uh, that we found. For example, letter A is 10. So I'm going to uh, erase this for one second, put the 10 there. And what about the B? B is 0. So gone. So I have a 10 x over x squared plus 5. How about the C? That was minus 50, so I put a 50 here. How about the D? It's minus 5. And that's it. All right. Now, here is where we are. Let me delete uh, this parenthesis here. So, because basically we are not done. I mean, we need we need to integrate because that was the idea. So, what we are doing is basically doing an integration of this we use partial fraction case 4 and now we break the whole thing the way it is so this kind of a complicated integral uh, I simplify to this uh, I will say maybe well now uh, leave it like that uh, never mind so what I was saying is let's work on the first one and let's see whether we can be able to tackle this one as well. The first one is basically is the integral. I can take the 10 out because it's a constant. I have x. Sorry for this. I have a x dx over x squared plus 5. And uh, this integral, since the order uh, the denominator is 2 and the order of the denominator is 1. This is definitely looks like logarithm. I, and indeed it is. For example, if I leave a, a u e equal x squared plus 5, du is equal to x dx. And definitely uh, du over 2 is x dx, which is right here. So this integral can be simplified to 10. What is x dx? is over 2. And uh, that would be du over x squared plus 5, but I said that that's u. See? So that integral is phi logarithm of, the, of u. So that would be phi logarithm. Let me fix this so it looks better. Phi logarithm of x squared plus 5. Easy, right? That was the first. So this here is this integral of this. Now, going along and uh, here we have uh, mm -hmm. I would say that this is easier if we break it in two pieces let's break this one in two part first part will be something like this minus 50 X over the denominator that will be x squared plus 5 square okay that would be one part and the second part will be minus uh, well, actually, let's put the minus with the phi. So that would be minus phi over over. Uh, sorry for my hand writing here. Over x squared plus phi as well squared dx. Uh, so we break this integral in two parts. Now, this part here, I would say, uh, let's see. 2x, I'm missing the dx here, 2x dx, so the order here is 4, the order above is 1. Definitely, is it is not logarithm, this is something else. This will not integrate in logarithm, but it will be easy to integrate if we leave, if we do a chain of variable, and we say, hey, 
let's say u equal x squared plus 5 that means du equal to x dx now if i divide by 2 i get the x dx perfect the 50 will come out as a constant that will be minus 50 integral of x dx but that's du over 2 i can put the 2 outside and that the whole thing x squared plus 5 that's elevated to the 2 so uh, it's easy to realize that this is going to be uh, the integral of u minus 2 du and uh, obviously this fall into that category of the integral of x and dx x to the n so this will be x n plus 1 over n plus 1 so if I do this here minus 25 that will be u minus 2 plus 1 over minus 2 plus 1 so the final result this is minus here uh, uh, will be minus 1 with this minus 25 that will be 25 and this will be u to the minus 1 which the final result will be 25 over u or 25 over the definition of u that was x squared plus 5 excellent so this result here is this integral we got everything rolling the way we want we are you know we are using partial fraction we simplify the nasty integral that we have at the beginning and we simplify it and we break it in kind of a three pieces this piece we was what was kind of easy the second piece a little bit easier as well now we are into the third piece looking into this I see problems <laughs> interesting huh uh, I thought a partial fraction will simplify the whole thing, but sometimes, sometimes, it gets a little bit, this result, unfortunately, is not that straightforward. Uh, and why is not? Because there's a 2 here. That 2 there really bothers me a lot. Uh, because, and with, it, and with that 2 as well inside here, there's no way that I can complete uh, the integral this integral definitely will require some let's say some breaking news let's work on that and I'll be back we interrupt this program to bring you a special report so we want to work on this integral let's pause for a second and let's figure out what's going on let's add that here somewhere and here is the integral that we are working on on that one how can we integrate that and uh, and why is a little bit harder to integrate and you will see in a second why like for example the big problem of this integral is unfortunately that here the order is two if this integral for any reason were like this uh, let's do a simple one here, but similar to that one. Uh, let's say x squared plus 1. Uh, the, this integral uh, is right on the table, and we know what it is. That integral is tangent, inverse tangent of x. As simple as that, plus, plus a general uh, constant. Now, do you know why this end up being like this and uh, let me explain why because that's part of this breaking news and the reason why this end up being like this is as follow for example let's try to integrate again what I'm saying is I'm not integrate integrating this one yet I'm only saying uh, this might look like this but it's not However, we know this one. Maybe if we understand this integral better, we will be able to apply whatever we learn from this integral into this one. That's basically what I'm saying. And let's do that. For example, I certainly can do some uh, def new definition for that integral to try to make life easier. And maybe, and maybe things will simplify uh, alone like for example let's say 
that somehow uh, I can define a variable here that x equal let's say uh, tangent and here I'm, I'm going to be using some uh, trigonometric property and you will see why tangent of uh, c a new variable as usual now if I do that then basically what I will do is the dx the dx is the derivative of the tangent of c if you go to any calculus book you will find that that derivative I mean tangent is sine over cosine and you can go the long way or you can go right to the definition of that derivative and that will be second uh, second square of c dc that's it nothing else now if I substitute this new definition that I have here then this will look like second square of c dc over let me erase this a little bit fix it better so that will be tangent of c squared plus 1 because basically x is tangent of c so I substitute here and I end up with this you will say hey that doesn't look good that's even I mean more ugly than the, than the initial part here but you will see in a second why this is for certain integral is the best choice just how to to work it out now you might know this sounds like a, a, a definition of one of those trigonometric identities and, and it is it's just that it's kind of hard to take a look at it remember you probably know this one cosine of c squared plus sine of c squared if you take a look to that one you always remember that that should be equal one and that's one of those identities that will stay with you forever basically and from this identity I can get this one right because if I divide by cosine squared in both sides cosine squared uh, like that then you know that this sine over cosine basically that's tangent square of C plus 1 equal 1 over cosine square of C interesting right now uh, remember I'm not solving this one here which is square that's another story I'm just saying that if I use something like this and I learn how this end up being tangent inverse or inverse tangent I can be able to use what I learned from this into this one so if I go back here and I do a little bit of math here so this end up being a uh, second of C DC over tangent square of C plus 1 but it's interesting because 1 over cosine square is the same as uh, second square of C so I put here tangent square plus 1 that's second second square of C see and you will say but I mean what I'm doing what what where where I'm getting well what I'm getting is basically that this will cancel out this cancel out and you only get this Z so the integral of DC is C and you say what yes that's what it is Z now recover now what is Z remember we use a definition what was the definition that tangent of C is X so I gotta go go back and get my X so let me put the definition here I'm saying is that X equal tangent of C so to get my X back you know the way it should be or in this case will be a uh, tangent inverse of X equal Z so that means that this integral of DX over X squared plus 1 the result is tangent inverse of X which is precisely what is on the table now you see 
I went through some trigonometric definition to arrive to this result. The question is, can we do that here? Let's apply what we learn to this integral and let's find out. All right? Our integral right now is this one. Is minus 5 over x squared plus 5 and this part is square dx. All right? So how can we integrate that one? We know that there's some trigonometric definition coming along because uh, we realized how easy it was to work this problem based on those definitions. Can we do the same here? Well, let's simplify some of, some of this a little bit. So that minus 5, I can take it out, and it will be the integral of dx, x squared plus 5, and this has to be squared. Now, if I take this x squared plus 5, I would like to see a 1 here. Make life easier. All right? And so, uh, let's do that. So, this will be the integral dx. Careful here. x squared plus 5. If I divide the whole thing by 5 and multiply by 5, right? I haven't done anything. All these have to be square. Be careful there because there's a 2 there. Now, if I keep simplifying this, I got a minus 5, and then if I get this 5 out, that would be a square, so that would be 25 here. The integral of dx over, now, I have an x squared over 5. That would be, I can do a, a little bit of algebra here, get it here, make it looking like this, plus 1 squared. See? Now, one thing that I can certainly do so that this starts to look a lot more like like the one that we know, this one. Uh, let's do a little bit more of math. You can simplify this. That would be one-fifth negative. And the integral. And let's define a new variable. U equal x over 5. If I define that variable, du equal 1 over the square, uh, square root of 5 dx. So dx, in this case, du times 5 equal dx. So if I substitute what I have here, that means uh, I can put the, the square root of 5 there. And that will be dx. And now x over square root of 5, that said that that's u, that's u squared. Sorry for this, this is not dx, this is du, du, there we go. du, uh, u squared plus 1, but now this is square, see? We are very close to get a good solution here because it starts to make more sense. Still, this is very far from inverse tangent and all that because this is square, very far, this is square. So you would have to deal with that too there. How we work on that case? Well, let's see. Again, we can use what we already learned about u squared plus 1. We learned that I can convert that uh, if I use, an, uh, let's say, if I use a definition. Actually, before I do that, let me, let me introduce a definition of what I want u to be. Like, for example, let's say that u is going to be as I did before, you see now you start to see why it was important to understand uh, this part here. I'm doing now a new definition, and let's use the Z again here. If I do that, if I do that, I can get the du, but the du is the derivative of tangent, and uh, for uh, the derivative of the tangent, we know that that's the sec second, second square of c all right good if if i put down this definition within u squared plus one that would be tangent square of c plus one but i know that there's result i can use certainly use this part here which we already work where is it 
Uh huh. Right here. Tangent square uh, of C plus 1 is second square, but careful here. I'm going to put the second, the second square here of, in this case, of Z. That's perfect. That's because that's a trigonometric definition. Identity, actually, we can use that. Now, if I substitute what all that, that I have here in this part here, let's see, equal minus square root of phi over phi, the integral of du, but du is second square z, dz, over u squared plus 1, but u squared plus 1 is second square of c, careful here, but all, oh, that's u squared plus 1, that's this definition here, but this whole thing is all square to the power of 2. So, let's keep working on this, that would be phi over phi, the integral here of the second square of c divided by the second to the fourth power of c, dc. If I simplify this, at least two cancel out, let's write this right, two cancel out, and we end up be with this. The integral of dc, second square dc, by definition, one over second square is cosine, right? So we end up with minus this, the integral of cosine square of c dc. Easy, right? Now, this, this integral is in any table that has to do with trigonometry. You can go very easily and get this out of a textbook, basically what I'm saying. Uh, although you can you also use a, a definition for cosine square, like for example, cosine square of c will look like uh, something, if I remember right, that would be 1 plus cosine of 2z over 2. If I do that, then the problem is pretty much gone because I have minus square root of phi over phi, the integral, I can take the 2 out, and let's put the 2 somewhere here. So I end up with 1 plus cosine of 2z dc. So this final integral will be uh, minus square root of phi over 10. The first part is easy. That will be c, right? And the second part you will have, remember, one half coming out of here, times the integral of cosine, that would be sine of 2, let's put, put the number right here, of 2z, final parenthesis. So, what's the final result of all this? Careful here. You got to go back and recover your x value because this integral is in terms of z. Now, if I go back, let's see, where we did that change, we did that change, here, u equal tangent of z. So to get my u back, I have to, oh, you know, my definition of z, c in this case, will be uh, inverse tangent of u, as simple as that. So, w in here, anytime I have a z, I have to do this, minus square of phi over 10 time tangent inverse of u, but u, all right, plus one and a half sine of 2 times z, but c is the tangent inverse of u, close that parenthesis, this one here and this one over here. Now, 
we are almost done, except that we need now to look. Remember, the, the whole integral started with x, so we're going to finish with the x. Now, what is the definition of u? You remember, let's look for that one. It's right here. u is x over square root of 5. u is x over square root of 5. So that means that our solution, and let me copy this integral here, which was very ugly to start with, but I think that we managed to get the result. Copy that one. Put it here somewhere. So our solution to that ugly integral end up being minus square root of 5 over 10 time tangent the inverse tangent of u but u by definition is x over 5 close this one plus one and a half sine of 2 tangent or inverse tangent of u which is x over 5 close this parenthesis and now uh, I have another parenthesis here so and a final one here this one go with this one all right and that's the end that's the result so we finish this breaking news reports as yet please stand by for further details we return you now to your regularly scheduled program so after all this effort we finally got that's last integral, so let me copy all this, copy, and uh, and let's go back to uh, the cases that we were working on. This case was case three or something similar to that, and uh, so let's see. Here we are. We got the first the first integral was this of this part. Now this integral was kind of broken in two parts uh, and one part here so and this last integral so let me let me do something here let me do a paste somewhere here so we know that this integral here actually it is repeated here so I can erase at least this one can be deleted and uh, I can start to formalize the whole thing a little bit more uh, in a complete fashion. So let's see. We were trying to integrate this, which was the original part. And uh, we put this somewhere here. And we end up with three parts on this integral. Two integrals that were straightforward which the first one uh, end up being this okay the second part I can whoops uh, sorry for it the second part end up being this part here which is 25 over x squared plus 5 and finally the third far which by <laughs> by no means it was very tough get that last piece which was this one here and let's see if I can get this there we go so this uh, there we go let's Let's see if I can get this better into a more and let's delete this so I can put the negative right here and that's basically the result plus eventually a constant because that's a general one this I mean Getting this part and this part was straightforward. Getting this one, oof, that was that was hard. 
you have to know your trigonometric identities and many things but guess what I, I basically only use this one which it was the most important one cosine square of any value of x plus the sine square that's equal one most of those identity come from here and you can work uh, work out all what you need basically from there the important part is that sometimes when you see these terms uh, I want I thought to put in you know like x x squared plus 1 somehow that term cannot trigger an identity a trigonometric identity that you might be able to use it for something in this case I was able to use it and demonstrate first of all why we get that tangent that inverse tangent for this type of integral when you have something like this right so you know that that's inverse tangent of x uh, but but then we demonstrate as well this one right and uh, and that give you a result that will be very similar to this one except that the uh, square root of 5 will not be there because it's a one here see how things kind of a go around well I think this video has been long enough because that <laughs> this last integral uh, was kind of tough I didn't mean to be that long it's just that some of these integrals refuse to cooperate and uh, and that was one of those uh, I think uh, I leave it like that and as I always said be safe uh, whatever is your final destination so, uh, one kind of one comment you know one quick comment here is sometimes these integrals are so hard to do it analytically that I rather do it numerically as long as I know the limits if I know the limits is that's my fair approach let's do it this numerically and, and let's get that over with but when it's not when it's a problem like this that you want to look for the general solution then you have to deal with whatever you know come out from from the different substitution you start to do until you start to get something that you are familiar with right so that's the idea as i as i said be safe whatever be your final destination